Hello, and welcome to iOS Developer Automation at Facebook. Um, if you've seen today's talk about reliable code at scale, you would know that we just open source a project we call IDB, or iOS Development Bridge. Um, in, in today's session, I want to get you up and running with IDB, um, and then we're going to do a hands-on where we do build iOS test automation together uh, in this classroom. Um, so first, let's talk about IDB and why we open sourced it. Um, if you haven't checked out the session, the session goes way deeper into why and examples and the reason why we, we built IDB and open sourced it. Uh, but I'll give you a brief overview here um, um, into why we built it. So um, we basically built IDB uh, for test automation inside Facebook with three goals in mind. Uh, the first was remote automation. Uh, so IDB is built into two parts. It has uh, what we call a companion, which uh, runs on Mac and interfaces directly with the simulators and devices. And the other part is a Python client and CLI, which runs anywhere. So this enables scenarios like a device lab, for example, uh, or fanning out commands to many different simulators at the same time. Uh, the second thing is... Um, simple primitives. So IDB has granular APIs that does one specific thing at a time, and it's very easy to add them all together and build comp more complicated scenarios. Um, and the CLI is built in a way where you, it's good for humans to use. It's very self-documented, and it's very good for automation as well. So you can um, build IDB into like an IDE, and you can use it from the command line yourself to automate the task to use. Um, the third goal, uh, is basically what we call CLI first. So Xcode has a lot of amazing features for test automation, but a lot of them are hidden behind the Xcode's GUI. So it's not very good for, uh, you know, if you want to run thousands of, uh, in a data center. Uh, so IDB tries to expose all of these um, features through it, IDB CLI itself. Um, so to get started with IDB, um, Basically, you need to have, like, if you want to follow me along in this session, you need to have Xcode installed because we're going to use iOS simulators. Uh, but if you, you know, don't want to follow along, if you don't have Xcode installed or if you don't want to follow, follow along, I'm just going to do everything on this map right here so you can just see everything. Um, if you're planning to follow along, it's very simple to install IDB. That companion part is installed through Brew, so just two commands and that should be set up. And then the Python part just installs through pip. Um, so. It only takes a few seconds if you want to follow along. I'm gonna, I can wait a few seconds to see some people typing. So um, that gets me excited So because we're going to hack together now. So it's good. At least I won't be hacking on my own. Um, so I'll give you a minute to set it up. And then um, we're going to get up and running. Um, Let's go back to the slides for a second, and then um, we can start hacking, yeah. You good? Oh, I'm, uh, and also, in the beginning, I'm sorry, I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Ziad. I'm a software engineer at Facebook. I also have Lawrence and Callum with us today on the IDB team, and they're going to be helping us out along the way. So if you have any problems while we're hacking together, you can just um, call out, and me, Callum, or Lawrence are going to, to come and help. So how many people are trying to install? Just to show of hands. One, two, three. OK, that's good. How many iOS engineers in the house? That's good. OK, whoever doesn't have his laptop out, come on, get it out. Cool, you're good? Awesome. Um, so let's talk about building the test automation. So uh, what we, our goal today is we want to run um, test bundles against um, m many simulators at the same time, right? Um, and that's something IDB allows you to do. It allows you to build once and run many, right? Because um, something, would, you know, it's very hard to do with Xcode. So um, we're going to... We're going to show you how to do that and show you how to you know, do other things with IDB, like record videos or show system logs and stuff like that. Um, we're going to use, sorry, we're going to use um, test bundles that are in the IDB repo directly. We, we don't have time to build them now. 
so we have a pre-built some, and we're going to use them there. But um, they're built the same way where you build any test bundle for iOS. There's nothing special about them. Um, so these, for example, are uh, some of the instructions we're going to use today. So the, like I said, the CLI is very easy. So you can see IDB list targets shows you the targets on your system. IDB boot boots a simulator. IDB log shows you the logs. Uh, we're just, we, we worked hard to make the CLI just very self-documenting. You can just read the command and figure out what it does. IDB launch launches the command, stuff like that. So let's switch now to a demo um, and see all of this in action. Uh, cool. Um, so um, the first thing I'm going to do is call IDB list targets. Um, which will uh, show me all the commands in my, uh, on the, all the targets in my system. So these are all iOS simulators that are installed with the Xcode installation. If I have any iPhone connected, it would show up here as well. If this is basically the name, the UDID of the of this device, the, whether it's shut down uh, or booted, uh, simulator or device, etc. Um, and then the first thing I want to do is boot a simulator, right? So I'm going to choose the 10R one. Um, do IDB boot and pass the UDID as a, an argument, and all it have, and then voila, it boots. Um, it's it takes a few seconds to boot, and then we're gonna we can we can move on. Yeah. Um, so if, for example, if I do IDB log, um, and I need to tell IDB which simulator to use because it can use multiple simulators at the same time. So uh, if I do IDB log, it will start showing me the log output of the simulator. And if I like click around, you know, the, the simulator logs are pretty crazy, um, so you can't really read them. You, it's a good idea to always like pipe them to a file, and then you can search them later or something. Um, and then um, I can, for example, do IDB list apps, um, which will show me all the apps um, installed on my on my simulator. So um, this has a few apps and like a few of the test apps. I can um, do IDB uh, launch and then also with the UDID and then a bundle identifier of the app I want to launch. And this, for example, will launch that app, right? So we have launch, we have terminate, we have tap, which presses uh, somewhere on the simulator, we have a lot, uh, many, many other commands that you know you can look at the documentation and uh, find them for yourself. But here we want to run um, XC tests, right? We want to run a test bundle. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is install that test bundle and install the app that will run the bundle. Um, so IDB install install basically installs an app. There is uh, you can provide that app as like a, a dot app that was built from um, Xcode or an IPA that was built for release. Or you can even provide a URL that points to that app or that IPA. So that's very useful if you know it was built by your CI and it's hosted somewhere and you just want to install it. Um, so for example, I do IDB install dash dash UDID, of course, because I want to tell it to use this uh, simulator. And then all I need to do is point it towards the app that was uh, in our, the IDB repository. And then this should install the app. Um, if I go here, you will see that it's installing. It's a very small app, so it's pretty fast. Um, let's do the same thing with um, with the XC test bundles. Um, the, so the thing with the XC test bundles is that we don't, can't really see anything being happening in the simulator because um, there is no f visual feedback on the simulator. But we also have IDB XC test list. Which, uh, which shows you the XC test bundles uh, installed on that simulator the same way uh, list apps shows you the apps installed. Um, so we can see that they're installed. And then uh, to run, all we need to do is IB XC test run. Uh, so we also have three ways of running tests. We have uh, run UI, which runs UI tests. We have run app, which runs the app test, that's just unit tests. And we have a way also called run logic, which r runs the, um, the app test but without uh, opening the app itself. Um, this is a special mode just because it saves us compute power, right? We don't really need to launch the app and run it to, to just run the test. 
and we don't need to even install the app, it's just it's faster. Um, so run UI, we'll run the UI test here, and then you can see that um, it's just, this is a very simple test, it just opens an empty app and goes through the, and then it prints the output uh, in the terminal. Cool, uh, so let's go back to the slides now. Uh, awesome, so um, this was a quick demo of like just simple, how to use IDB uh, manually to, to to, to, to run apps, to run tests, and launch stuff. Uh, but we, let's take it one, we can, I want to show you now how to take it one step further and uh, use it for actual automation. So we can write like a simple bash script um, that takes a UDID because that's the only actual variable here. Um, and then we can run the same test bundles on three different apps, uh, three different simulators at the same time, for example. Um, so let's switch back to the demo and see what, how we can do this. Um, so clear. Cool. So I wrote a very simple bash script here um, that basically has the commands that I was running, right? Uh, it uh, takes a one variable in, the UDID of the simulator, and then it boots that simulator, installs the access tests, installs the apps, and just runs it, right? So this is just six, com six lines, um, and this allows us to run it on three different simulators. So let's see how we can do that with three different simulators. Um, so first of all, I need three terminals, right? Um, let's go to the desktop on each. And then I, wanna, I want to, um, I need the UIDs again because I, of course, don't remember them. Um, and then all I need to do is just uh, run the script with three different UIDs. So that, that one is for the 10R, and then we can do it again with, the, for example, the 10S Max. And then one third time for, okay, let's do a six plus. All right, and if I run, this will basically uh, boot two more, two more simulators. Um, and oh, they're booting right here. Uh, we'll boot two more simulators and then run the test at the same time when all the three simulators are. Um, so you can see how very easy it is to use IDB to build test automation and run three different tests at the same time. Yeah. Um, yeah, so um, this was basically a quick look on how to use IDB and how, to, how we can automate it. Uh, let's go back to the slides now, if that's possible. Awesome. Um, um, you, can, you can find the repository on GitHub. It's github.com slash Facebook slash IDB. There's uh, a lot more commands over there, and then um, we really appreciate your feedback. And uh, if you have any issues, please raise them on the repo. We're going to work on them. And we, if you want to contribute, we please put your pull requests up there. We'll help uh, with them. Um, Thank you very much.